Hey everyone, and welcome to part 5 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. So, in this tutorial, we're just going to go over a little bit of the sprites. Before, our code made it so it just looped through the sprite sheet, and what we wanted to do is call one row at a time. So, in order to do that, I had to go and change up the code for a bit. I was messing around with it for about an hour, trying to figure out how to get it to work properly, and I just couldn't figure it out. So I jumped back on the Unify wiki, and I guess they had an updated version of this, this script here, which uh, allowed you to play either rows or columns, depending on which one, and you can specify which ones to repeat on. So the previous one, you could go through like one row at a time, or one in two rows, but you couldn't specify which exact row that you wanted to call from for the sprites. Now, people using 4.3 will not have to worry about this. You just do the uh, the sprite animation as usual. But for this, if you guys are using like 4.2 or earlier, you're going to want to follow the tutorial on how to set up the sprite. So I figured I'd just make the tutorial in order to get this uh, working for people if they're following it this way. So I will include down in the uh, description below a link to the new code. It's almost similar to, to the uh, previous code we had, but there's a couple of new things in here. Just the way that they organized it. I believe they changed up some of this stuff a little bit, and the way they handled different uh, inputs and whatnot. But yeah, and then they have a couple of different uh, variables and stuff. So what you're going to want to do is just copy this either into your previous code or a new code. Um, specify all this data again. And the thing we're going to be changing is the row number. So 0 is this one, and then 1, 2, and 3. So depending on which way we're moving, we're going to be changing this number. So yeah, just copy the code into a new script and attach it to your player, or put it into the old one and adjust things accordingly. So once you have all that done, you can just close it. Not going to need that again. And then we'll go through and actually edit this stuff. Now there's a couple of things that we need to do. Go up here real quick. For one, we need to declare a variable that we're going to be accessing that script from. So animate sprite new, which is, let's see here, where's my player? Oh, animate sprite new is the script we're going to be working with and that's attached to our player. So what we're going to do is just grab that and that's what we're going to be referencing on to be able to call those variables or variables from that script. So if we scroll down here we have sprite so since we named this sprite or you can name it whatever you want um, this is how we're going to be accessing the variables. So sprite dot row number equals three. So if we're moving north um, we want our player's back to be facing us as they walk. And total cells, that's four. So it's, the, the reason that I put this here is because when we're not moving, we want to just set this to one. So we're going to have to reset it to four eventually, and it's better just to reset it each time we're moving. So same with this, S, it's going to be row number four, and that's moving towards the camera. And then we have these ones set up as well. You see that each one is labeled four. Now I'll show you guys where we're going to put the other piece of code to make it so when our player is not moving, the animation freezes, but it freezes in the correct direction that we want. So it'll constantly be playing that animation looped if we do stop. So what we're going to do is say if is moving for that, and then else if we're not moving, we want to change our total cells to one. So it's playing the row number, but it's only playing the first cell in that row. So if we look here, normally it's cycling through these animations, but since we change that to one, it'll just play whichever one it's on. I believe it'll just play that first one, which will look like our player is just standing still, which is something we want. And I believe that's all I did to set that up. and so we can go check it out in game real quick. So if you see when we walk in a certain direction our player walks and when we stop they freeze in that direction. Just like that. 
So this way we don't have our sprite constantly playing. And we can just do that. So we have a nice little walking animation going. If you guys are using the um, the 4.3 sprite system, you're going to want to set it up the exact way that I did it, but just for playing different animations. So if you guys are familiar with the animation editor and stuff and getting that all set up, then it shouldn't be too difficult to get it set up like this. I'm also going to be recording a uh, Unity 2D tutorial soon on how to set up that sprite system if you're looking to set it up that way. I'm probably only going to go over a little bit of the code, but you guys will be able to figure it out. But for now, if you guys are using this way, um, go down, go download the um, the new sprite manager script and change it to your liking so it works with your uh, sprite sheet. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. It's just going to be a quick one for the people wondering about that, just so we can get our player looking correctly when they walk.